In classical electromagnetism, Ampere's circuital law not to be confused with Ampere's force law that André-Marie Ampère discovered in 1823 relates the integrated magnetic field around a closed loop to the electric current passing through the loop. James Clerk Maxwell not Ampere derived it using hydrodynamics in his 1861 paper, On Physical Lines of Force, and it is now one of the Maxwell equations, which form the basis of classical electromagnetism. Topic. Maxwell's original circuital law The original form of Maxwell's circuital law, which he derived in his 1855 paper, On Faraday's Lines of Force, based on an analogy to hydrodynamics, relates magnetic fields to electric currents that produce them. It determines the magnetic field associated with a given current, or the current associated with a given magnetic field. The original circuital law is only a correct law of physics in a magnetostatic situation, where the system is static except possibly for continuous steady currents within closed loops. For systems with electric fields that change over time, the original law as given in this section must be modified to include a term known as Maxwell's correction see below. <laughs> <laughs> Equivalent forms The original circuital law can be written in several different forms, which are all ultimately equivalent an integral form and a differential form. The forms are exactly equivalent, and related by the Kelvin-Stokes theorem, see the proof section below. Forms using SI units, and those using CGS units. Other units are possible, but rare. This section will use SI units, with CGS units discussed later. Forms using either B or H magnetic fields. These two forms use the total current density and free current density, respectively. The B and H fields are related by the constitutive equation, B equals mu zero H where mu zero is the magnetic constant. Equals Topic Explanation Equals the integral form of the original circuital law is a line integral of the magnetic field around some closed curve C arbitrary but must be closed. The curve C in turn bounds both a surface S which the electric current passes through again arbitrary but not closed since no three-dimensional volume is enclosed by S and encloses the current. The mathematical statement of the law is a relation between the total amount of magnetic field around some path line integral due to the current which passes through that enclosed path surface integral, in terms of total current, which is the sum of both free current and bound current the line integral of the magnetic B field in Tesla's T around closed curve C is proportional to the total current i.e. N C passing through a surface S enclosed by C. In terms of free current, the line integral of the magnetic H field in amperes per meter, AM around closed curve C equals the free current if, ENC through a surface S J is the total current density in amperes per square meter, AM JF is the free current density only C is the closed line integral around the closed curve C S denotes a 2D surface integral over S enclosed by C is the vector dot product DL is an infinitesimal element a differential of the curve C i.e. a vector with magnitude equal to the length of the infinitesimal line element, and direction given by the tangent to the curve C. DS is the vector area of an infinitesimal element of surface S that is, a vector with magnitude equal to the area of the infinitesimal surface element, and direction normal to surface S. The direction of the normal must correspond with the orientation of C by the right-hand rule. See below for further explanation of the curve C and surface S times is the curl operator. Topic. Ambiguities and sign conventions There are a number of ambiguities in the above definitions that require clarification and a choice of convention. First, three of these terms are associated with sign ambiguities. The line integral C could go around the loop in either direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. The vector area ds could point in either of the two directions normal to the surface, and ienc is the net current passing through the surface S, meaning the current passing through in one direction minus the current in the other direction. But either direction could be chosen as positive. 
These ambiguities are resolved by the right hand rule, with the palm of the right hand toward the area of integration, and the index finger pointing along the direction of line integration. The outstretched thumb points in the direction that must be chosen for the vector area ds. Also the current passing in the same direction as ds must be counted as positive. The right hand grip rule can also be used to determine the signs. Second, there are infinitely many possible surfaces S that have the curve C as their border. Imagine a soap film on a wire loop, which can be deformed by moving the wire. Which of those surfaces is to be chosen? If the loop does not lie in a single plane, for example, there is no one obvious choice. The answer is that it does not matter. By Stokes' theorem, the integral is the same for any surface with boundary C, since the integrand is the curl of a smooth field, i.e., exact. In practice, one usually chooses the most convenient surface with the given boundary to integrate over. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Free current versus bound current. The electric current that arises in the simplest textbook situations would be classified as free current. For example, the current that passes through a wire or battery. In contrast, bound current arises in the context of bulk materials that can be magnetized and or polarized. All materials can to some extent. When a material is magnetized, for example, by placing it in an external magnetic field, the electrons remain bound to their respective atoms, but behave as if they were orbiting the nucleus in a particular direction, creating a microscopic current. When the currents from all these atoms are put together, they create the same effect as a macroscopic current, circulating perpetually around the magnetized object. This magnetization current Jm is one contribution to bound current. The other source of bound current is bound charge. When an electric field is applied, the positive and negative bound charges can separate over atomic distances in polarizable materials, and when the bound charges move, the polarization changes, creating another contribution to the bound current, the polarization current Jp. The total current density J due to free and bound charges is then J equals J F plus J M plus J P display style math BF J equals math BF J underscore math from F plus math BF J underscore math from M plus math BF J underscore math from P with JF the free or conduction current density all current is fundamentally the same microscopically nevertheless there are often practical reasons for wanting to treat bound current differently from free current for example, the bound current usually originates over atomic dimensions, and one may wish to take advantage of a simpler theory intended for larger dimensions. The result is that the more microscopic Ampere's circuital law, expressed in terms of B and the microscopic current which includes free, magnetization and polarization currents, is sometimes put into the equivalent form below in terms of H and the free current only. For a detailed definition of free current and bound current, and the proof that the two formulations are equivalent, see the proof. Section below. Topic: <laughs> Shortcomings of the original formulation of the circuital law. There are two important issues regarding the circuital law that require closer scrutiny. First, there is an issue regarding the continuity equation for electrical charge. In vector calculus, the identity for the divergence of a curl states that the divergence of the curl of a vector field must always be zero. Hence, times b equals zero. Display style nabla c dot nabla times math bf b equals zero. And so the original Ampere's circuital law implies that j equals zero. Display style nabla c dot math bf j equals zero. But in general, reality follows the continuity equation for electric charge. J equals minus rho t. Display style nabla c dot math bf j equals frac partial rho partial t, which is non-zero for a time-varying charge density. An example occurs in a capacitor circuit where time varying charge densities exist on the plates. Second, there is an issue regarding the propagation of electromagnetic waves. For example, in free space, where j equals 0, 
Display style Math BF J equals Math BF zero. The circuital law implies that times B equals zero. Display style Nabla times Math BF B equals Math BF zero. But to maintain consistency with the continuity equation for electric charge, we must have times B equals one C two E T Display style Nabla times Math BF B equals frac one C carrot two frac partial Math BF E partial T to treat these situations, the contribution of displacement current must be added to the current term in the circuital law. James Clerk Maxwell conceived of displacement current as a polarization current in the dielectric vortex C, which he used to model the magnetic field hydrodynamically and mechanically. He added this displacement current to Ampere's circuital law at equation 112 in his 1861 paper, On Physical Lines of Force. Topic. Displacement current In free space, the displacement current is related to the time rate of change of electric field. In a dielectric the above contribution to displacement current is present too, but a major contribution to the displacement current is related to the polarization of the individual molecules of the dielectric material. Even though charges cannot flow freely in a dielectric, the charges in molecules can move a little under the influence of an electric field. The positive and negative charges in molecules separate under the applied field, causing an increase in the state of polarization, expressed as the polarization density P. A changing state of polarization is equivalent to a current. Both contributions to the displacement current are combined by defining the displacement current as J D equals T D R T Display style Math BF J underscore Mathram D equals frac partial partial T Math BF D Math BF R T where the electric displacement field is defined as D equals Epsilon zero E plus P equals Epsilon zero Epsilon R E Display style Math BF D equals var epsilon underscore zero Math BF E plus Math BF P equals var epsilon underscore zero var epsilon underscore mathrm R Math BF E where epsilon zero is the electric constant, epsilon R the relative static permittivity, and P is the polarization density. Substituting this form for D in the expression for displacement current, it has two components J D equals Epsilon zero E T plus P T Display style Math BF J underscore Mathram D equals var epsilon underscore zero frac partial Math BF E partial T plus frac partial Math BF P partial T The first term on the right hand side is present everywhere, even in a vacuum. It doesn't involve any actual movement of charge, but it nevertheless has an associated magnetic field, as if it were an actual current. Some authors apply the name displacement current to only this contribution. The second term on the right hand side is the displacement current as originally conceived by Maxwell, associated with the polarization of the individual molecules of the dielectric material. Maxwell's original explanation for displacement current focused upon the situation that occurs in dielectric media. In the modern post-ether era, the concept has been extended to apply to situations with no material media present, for example, to the vacuum between the plates of a charging vacuum capacitor. The displacement current is justified today because it serves several requirements of an electromagnetic theory, correct prediction of magnetic fields in regions where no free current flows, prediction of wave propagation of electromagnetic fields, and conservation of electric charge in cases where charge density is time-varying. For greater discussion see displacement current. Topic. Extending the original law, the Maxwell-Ampere equation Next, the circuital equation is extended by including the polarization current, thereby remedying the limited applicability of the original circuital law. 
Treating free charges separately from bound charges, the equation including Maxwell's correction in terms of the H field is the H field is used because it includes the magnetization currents, so Jm does not appear explicitly. See H field and also note C H D L equals S J F plus D T D S display style oint underscore C math BF H C dot mathram D bold symbol L equals I I N T underscore S left math BF J underscore mathram F plus frac partial math BF D partial T right C dot mathram D math BF S integral form where H is the magnetic H field also called auxiliary magnetic field magnetic field intensity or just magnetic field D is the electric displacement field, and Jf is the enclosed conduction current or free current density. In differential form, times H equals J F plus D T. Display style Math BF Nabla times Math BF H equals Math BF J underscore Mathram F plus frac partial Math BF D partial T. On the other hand, treating all charges on the same footing disregarding whether they are bound or free charges, the generalized Ampere's equation, also called the Maxwell-Ampere equation, is in integral form see the proof section below in differential form In both forms J includes magnetization current density as well as conduction and polarization current densities. That is, the current density on the right side of the Ampere-Maxwell equation is J F plus J D plus J M equals J F plus J P plus J M plus Epsilon zero E T equals J plus Epsilon zero E T Display style Math BF J underscore Mathram F plus Math BF J underscore Mathram D plus Math BF J underscore Mathram M equals Math BF J underscore Mathram F plus Math BF J underscore Mathram P plus Math BF J underscore Mathram M plus Far Epsilon underscore zero frac partial Math BF E partial T equals Math BF J plus Far Epsilon underscore zero frac partial Math BF E partial T where current density JD is the displacement current, and J is the current density contribution actually due to movement of charges, both free and bound. Because D equals rho, the charge continuity issue with Ampere's original formulation is no longer a problem. Because of the term in epsilon 0 e, t, wave propagation in free space now is possible. With the addition of the displacement current, Maxwell was able to hypothesize correctly that light was a form of electromagnetic wave. See electromagnetic wave equation for a discussion of this important discovery. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Proof of equivalence. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Ampere's circuital law in CGS units. In CGS units, the integral form of the equation, including Maxwell's correction, reads C B D L equals one C S four Pi J plus E T D S Display style oint underscore C Math BF B C dot Mathram D bold symbol L equals frac one C I I N T underscore S left four pi Math BF J plus frac partial Math BF E partial T right C dot Mathram D Math BF S where C is the speed of light. The differential form of the equation again, including Maxwell's correction, is times B equals one C four Pi J 
plus e t display style math bf nabla times math bf b equals frac 1 c left 4 pi math bf j plus frac partial math bf e partial t right topic see also topic notes Topic. Further reading Griffiths, David J. 1998. Introduction to Electrodynamics 3rd ed. Prentice Hall. ISBN 0-13805326-X. Tipler, Paul Physics for Scientists and Engineers, Electricity, Magnetism, Light, and Elementary Modern Physics 5th ed. W. H. Freeman. ISBN 0 7167 08108. External links MISN 0138 Ampere's Law PDF file by Kirby Morgan for Project PHYSNET. MISN 0145 The Ampere Maxwell Equation, Displacement Current PDF file by J. S. Kovacs for Project PHYSNET. A Dynamical Theory of the Electromagnetic Field Maxwell's Paper of 1864